So I recently went on a spiritual retreat with my best friend. It was a shamanic healing retreat with a psychic medium who my best friend knows because she's worked with her for a couple of years. Basically my best friend said, we have to go. She took me with her. It was during the equinox weekend and we went to Glastonbury for this retreat. It was a really special, beautiful, profound experience. We had a fantastic weekend and I did a bit of shopping as well, of course. So I'm gonna be telling you a little bit about the adventure of the retreat and sharing with you what I picked up in Glastonbury while I was there and some more about the wondrous things that we experienced together. So if you're interested to learn more about this fabulous retreat and the beautiful town of Glastonbury during the Equinox weekend, get yourself a nice hot drink, settle back, relax and enjoy. Hi everyone. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I have not filmed a vlog in so long and I'm probably going to be atrocious at it. So I'm going to try my best to not completely suck. But I am so excited because I'm about to leave for this weekend. I'm going to a retreat in Glastonbury with my best friend. And I'm just so excited because I've never done a retreat quite like this before. So I'm really, really excited to delve deep and yeah explore. It's going to be good. So I've packed up my bags. I've got a number of books and I've got some art materials and I've got some stuff for an altar so my best friend and I can create an altar together. So I think it's going to be really amazing and I'm about to get on the road so yay come with me. So I'm here. I'm in a little Airbnb and I'm waiting for my friend to get here and I can't find my camera holder so I'm just holding it I need to see if I can find it I've got to get ready because we're about to go out for dinner and I look like an absolute hot mess so it's all very exciting I will check in again soon hi everyone welcome back to my channel thank you so much for joining me for today's video I hope that you're well and safe and looking after yourselves and feeling all the joys of autumn and that spooky season brings. So obviously this is the season of witch. It's like the most powerful and profound for me. It always has been ever since I was little. I'd always get that feeling. My parents never celebrated Halloween or anything. So I never got to trick or treat or anything like that when I was a child, but I just had this feeling in my bones. And the funny thing was I was definitely way too young, but the first time I ever saw the start of Halloween, as in the movie Halloween, I was like, that's it, that's the vibe. That that beginning, like that spooky part at the beginning where, you know, it's really nasty and he walks into the house and he's this kid and you know, you know what happens. When I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh. It's like, I was terrified, but I knew I couldn't watch anymore. And so I just turned it over. I was like maybe 10 or 11. So it was definitely inappropriate for me, but I was just like, oh my gosh. And I just felt that like, that's it. And just the, the autumn leaves, like I always loved the, the smell, the fragrance in the air, the food. It was always just so powerful for me. So I adore the autumn equinox and of course I adore sewing. And this whole time, I just feel like I am thriving, you know? I'm a Leo sun, so you'd think that summer would be like my peak thriving time being my sun sign, but it's really not. I'm a Scorpio rising and I actually feel so much more at home during Scorpio season. Currently we're in Libra season of course, and we've just had the Aries full moon. And as a child of Mars, I was just pumped up. I felt so fired up, you know? And I think that part of the healing that I've been processing and assimilating in the last week and a half or so since I've, well, it's a week really, since I've returned from the retreat has been so powerful and profound. And just the other day during that Aries full moon, I felt so powerful and empowered in myself. And I knew I'd written about this already, of course, on Patreon. And I knew what this full moon was gonna mean, but I never quite know how it's gonna feel for me because it always slightly changes. But I felt so empowered, and it must be because I'm clearly a child of Mars, being a Scorpio rising, but I just felt so empowered. And I really feel that part of the, the power that I felt was some of that claiming back work that I did during this retreat that was incredibly powerful. And I just felt, inside like I was singing from within and like my womb space felt really powerful and alive with that divine feminine but it also felt soft and open and that's what I was sort of healing and, and learning through and that's the wisdom that was coming through during the retreat. I also started my bleed on the Aries full moon the other day as well. So it was Friday as well, Venus day of course. So I had just all of this like Oh, divine feminine like yum throughout my body and I felt so powerful and soft and feminine and beautiful and it was amazing because I, I spent such a lot of my life feeling disempowered by the patriarchy and by people telling me that I shouldn't be too loud or I'm too much and too emotional and too sensitive or I'm you know too pretty or not pretty enough or too fat or too thin and just like oh shut up. 
You know what I mean? Like, I'm just so gonna have to bleep that out. But I was just on one, and I've been on one all weekend, like, really, really fired up. And, like, I have gotten to the point where I have had enough being in circles, listening to people, telling me what for, telling me, no, you can't be like this, or no, you're wrong about that, or you're wrong about this. I'm just like, no, no, not having it. Not even sorry, sorry, not sorry. It's not my paradigm, no, not having it anymore. And it's just this incredible, I was checking on my candle, still there, uh, incredible awakening within me, and like, I feel so, so powerful now. And partly the Aries for Moon, as I said, but also this, this work that I've been doing, and this healing that's been happening, and moving through me, all the energy moving through me since the retreat has been so incredible. So I'll tell you a little bit about the retreat. So my best friend, I mentioned her in my previous video, she's on this mediumship journey, quite a lot of psychic skills in terms of being able to sense past loved ones for others and such, and she's deepening into that practice. I've talked about some of the Claire gifts that I have. So I have clairvoyance quite frequently, I have clairaudience occasionally, I have clairgnosis and clairsentience as well, clairfeeling. Sometimes I get like clairgustience where you can smell and taste things, mostly the smell. When I was younger, I had quite a lot of the clairvoyance and the Claire audience, and I still get quite a lot of the clairvoyance, less of the Claire audience, but it does come through. Sometimes during the hypnagogic state, I have voices that are not mine, and they sound different to mine, and they're in my head, obviously, but I can hear them in my ears, and I can pick up certain things that people are saying, but sometimes it's such a lot, and they're layered voices, and I cannot pick up on everything, and sometimes it goes as well, because the voices move so fast, and it's, it's often like, the way I'm talking right now, it's so fired up, and like, there's just such a lot, it's almost like people are arguing, there's just an intense emotion, and what I pick up on is that it's actually going on around me, like, nearby, is what I, I think it is, and so I put it often to the back, because I have pretty much worked out that a lot of those voices are not relevant. Occasionally, I have dialogues that come through and they have specific messages that I'm like, yeah, okay, I think that that is something that is, that I need to remember and retain because that is to do with my journey, that is to do with my shadow work healing, that's coming from my guides for me. But a lot of the time it passes through and it's other stuff for other people. So I know that there's that going on for me. But it's something I've never really done a course or anything like that. I've only ever read about it and I've only ever practiced psychic exercise and such for myself. As a child, I did quite a lot of those things anyway. I had some books, obviously, and in some of the teenage magazines I had, like I learned how to read auras in that way. And then using the websites, you know, those Angel Fire websites and stuff, I learned how to do those kinds of things that way when I was a teenager. And I think that when you're a young person, you have those things very strong anyway. You know, I'd often see colors, I'd see auras very clearly, I'd see spots moving spirits and I know I had some very profound experiences on the astral when I was a child. I could lucid dream at will, astral project. I did sleep work a few times and I also did have sleep paralysis as well as a child but it's hard to control as an adult even like when you're well rested as well it's hard to control but sometimes I will have just a very difficult night where I sleep solidly for hours and hours and hours on end but I wake up and it's such a raw profound like visceral dream that it's not a dream and you know it's not a dream and you also you wake up and you're so freaking exhausted like you've been running around all night and it's actually just not helpful but you wake up and you know you can remember it like you're there you can remember the conversations you can remember the, the faces in front of you and like how their expressions and the way that you felt and the things that you were saying to them I see it from within myself but also see it like from the other perspective as well, there's a very clear difference. And also there's a very clear difference with like visitations from loved ones, which I've had once or twice, but I've also had warning dreams from the other side as well, from my beloved dead. There's that ancestral stuff as well, and I think that once you've had that kind of visitation, there's a very stark difference between a dreaming and those visitations as well, and you will get to know the difference as you sort of deepen into those exercises. But I'm going off on one, really. I mean, this is just very casual because I'm literally just telling you my experiences. But during this retreat, this was more of a shamanic healing retreat. So it was a lot about shadow work, a lot about the witch wound came up, which I have spoken about on my channel here and there, and I've never done like a dedicated video. But it is something that I've been studying for a long time. And really, it's just another way of talking about the patriarchal wound because it is the same. And so working with Lilith, a lot of these things come up anyway because they're Eve wounds, you know, I like to call them Eve wounds because I feel they very much are and that really resonates for me. But a lot of the witch wound is also the sisterhood wound, the ways in which we as women pit each other against one another and just for instance, schoolgirls can be so mean. They really can be, even as young as my daughter's age. I mean, my daughter kind of doesn't really run in 
many circles at school. She has just a couple of close friends. She's very much away with the fairies, you know, just doing her own thing and very much in dreamland, which is great. But there's some very grown up girls and I know that there is some, you know, bitchiness that goes on and it's it's not nice at all. But uh, as young as eight, you know, seven, eight are being like really, really mean to each other. And there's just something this very pervasive where there's this competitiveness between women that I just have always tried to reject really. I mean, I remember being young and I mean, mostly I was the one being picked on, but like I remember sort of a few occasions where I had the opportunity to be mean and I could just not do it. it. It just was going against me, even to the point where like if I was in a group of friends and they started to bitch about someone else, I'd just be like, you know, that's a bit mean. And actually started to like come into myself when I was like, no, 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 I actually don't want to be part of that. So either just walk away or stand up for that person. And I've always been that way. And you know, I'm not saying I'm perfect, dear God, no. And I'm not the perfect friend either. You know, I try to be kind and good and loving and considerate and give people the benefit of the doubt. And I try to be as fair as possible. But obviously, you know, sometimes you might have concern for a friend. So you might like say that you're concerned about a friend to another friend, but I wouldn't consider that to be bitching. But you know, sometimes you do end up doing things like that. But I've always been fiercely loyal and maybe that's the Leo and the Scorpio in me and the Cancer as well, the Cancer moon. But like, I've always been that way and always trying my best, but I just hate seeing other women tear other women down and that I feel that if we uplift other women, then we all win. And I've been in so many occasions when I've been in the workplace and new women have come in and they've been talented, powerful, beautiful, and they've been rejected at first. And it's like, you know, what the hell? Like, why are you bitching about this woman who, you know, you're clearly threatened by? Let's just, like, chat to her. So I would always make friends with those women and um, found that, you know, like me, they'd very much had that treatment as well, you know, that where people treat them unfairly. And that was just always what I would experience. And so we were doing a lot of this work during this retreat. It was really powerful. The retreat was with a woman called Sue. She's a psychic medium. She's fantastic. And my best friend has worked really closely with her doing such a lot of deep work, like past life regression, etc. So Sue runs the gamut, she does a lot of this work. And she's trained as a shamanic practitioner as well. So we did a lot of journey work. We did a lot of meditation. We did some work with the Three Cauldrons, Irish Celtic paradigm I've talked about before. That model of understanding your three selves, your lower, middle, and upper selves, and how they relate to your physical body, and then going and journey inside to see what state they're in. Of course we did lots of grounding exercises as well, centering, protection work and shielding. Everyone in the group had different levels of experience and coming at it from a different perspective. There were some people there who very much experienced spirits on the daily so there was also like a spirit presence during the retreat as well which was very powerful and we talked about so much stuff. Rage rituals came up and it was so beautiful you know and this sisterhood they were so supportive of one another and you know we could see when wounds were coming up within each other you know and around each other but there was just that support there that support system and it's like we would see each other and then support each other through it and that was so beautiful it was just so nice to be around those women who are like-minded and even if you're on slightly different pathways you're exploring different areas of spirituality or paganism or witchcraft or shamanism or you know psychic development different experience levels different pathways but everyone's coming to this with a desire to grow a desire to explore themselves to understand themselves to know themselves and to dig in deep to do some of that shadow work to do more of that shadow work to understand the layers of the witch wound and unpeeling that onion you know the layers of the onion and getting to know what's really at the deep root of the wounds that we have and some of those shadows the ways in which we've put our talents boxed away our talents and hidden things that are so beautiful about ourselves and so it was such a lovely experience I cannot thank Sue enough and my bestie because she took me so it was so wonderful I will link Sue's details all below the first day was a Friday the first day we spent doing meditations etc and the second day we did more of similar we also did some rituals together where we used some leaves and we our past selves, our present selves and our future selves, so things that we were letting go of, things that we are currently moving through and then things that we are manifesting for the future and then we release those into the wilds. We also made these beautiful medicine wheels together and this is a shamanic technique and this symbolises essentially the white symbolises the north which is your higher mind, knowledge and wisdom, your intellect and then below the physical being, the body and then in black what is in shadow, what your working through what you're healing and then the yellow which symbolizes the higher self and that spiritual growth and evolution and there's an animal with each as well yellow is hummingbird 
The physical is the panther, I believe, and the south is the serpent. So I need to figure out and remember what the north was. I will put them below, but it was really beautiful. So I cannot thank Sue enough because all of the training that Sue had done with shamanic practitioners, she brought all of that healing. And of course, I say myself, I'm not a shamanic practitioner, but Sue has done all of that work. And so, you know, she's also been empowered to teach that as well. So it, it was coming from a highly valuable and authentic source, you know? And so I really, really trust Sue with that. She held a very safe space for us as well. As I said before, you know, I felt very safe within this group of very beautiful women, soul searching women who are looking to deepen into that shadow work and that inner work as well. I felt very empowered to speak my truth and to be myself. And, you know, there was a lot of tears as well. I remember the Saturday, which was the second day, we went for a beautiful dinner together at Queen of Cups, which is a lovely Lebanese restaurant in Glastonbury. And some stuff happened whereby a little girl fell over in the street. And I ended up like crying, like I just burst into tears. And so my best friend was like cuddling me. But there was tears through the weekend, you know, that, like I said, the spirits were coming up for some people. There was just such a lot we were moving through. And I just cannot thank those women enough, you know? There's a Facebook group as well that we have. And Sue has this wonderful subscription that my best friend is currently signed up to and I would like to join as well, where there's like a couple of Zooms a month, I think, and then a couple of meditations that Sue sends out. And I definitely would like to join that. And then there's gonna be more meditations as well and more programs. And Sue does these psychic development groups as well in Kidderminster up near her home and so I would quite like to do one of those as well with her. Very much trust her to be, you know, supporting me with that journey as I deepen into those her senses that I do have naturally and to strengthen those. I know that my best friend has done a couple of those before as well and so I would like to look into joining one of those. Sue's background as well, obviously practitioner for a long time, many years, but also a mental health nurse so she has that healthcare training as well but then also the shamanism training and psychic development and Sue did work for Psychic Sisters in London for a while as well so that's how my best friend actually found out about Sue and then ended up working quite closely with Sue so yeah I, I had such a positive beautiful experience and I was with my best friend as well so it was incredible actually because some of the things that came up for me involved my inner child and some unexpected stuff that actually Sue said to me the moment I saw her, and well, she was, it was quite funny actually because we were standing at the door and we were in the assembly rooms up in Glastonbury and I was kind of stood by the door but I couldn't get in before Sue was starting to cleanse, smoke cleanse people. So I ended up holding the door as Sue was smoke cleansing someone else. And then it was interesting because we had a sort of, although we had very different experiences, we also had a lot in common. And so, we both kind of looked at each other and we knew that we were both supposed to be there and Sue knew as well and like we were all looking at each other and I had the goosebumps and tears in my eyes and it was all just very, very powerful and profound. And then when Sue smoke cleansed me, she said straight away, there's something about this, isn't there? And I was like, I don't know, is there? And I'm not gonna say what it was because it is very private and I want to protect people. But I was like, I don't know, is there? And I was not really sure what she was talking about. And she was like, I don't know, that's what I'm hearing. That's what the guides, that's what her guides were telling her. And then obviously she was challenging that, so she didn't quite remember it later on, but when I referenced it, I was like, well, I know what that was now. And so, you know, I shared that with Sue and with the group. And it was highly profound because actually what it, what it did was highlight for me how a wound from my inner child has actually impacted some of my current relationships now. And it was very, very powerful, very profound. And I've actually started to move towards doing some of that healing work and understanding more of what has come up and why and how I can just start to sort of love that about myself. And thinking as well, when we looked at the cauldrons, some stuff that came up for me as well, I could see my central cauldron. My base cauldron was still upright, but it was all rusty because it had had this overflow of water that had just dripped through because my middle cauldron was like on its side and it was this like silver kind of platter and it all just like, everything had just fallen off. And it's like all of my self-esteem had just been swiped away by some bad experiences. And it was like, there was nothing left. It was all just like, blah, gone. And I really needed to like build that back up again. But I said, you know, I just felt, I feel like I'm almost becoming really, really rigid and hard. And I just can't let anyone in anymore because I've lost trust and faith in people. And I don't want to open my heart anymore to people. I don't want to be myself anymore with people because I don't trust them. But then I do want to be myself. I do want to be my authentic self and F them, you know, if they don't like who I am and how I am. So it's kind of this dichotomy that was going on and what I knew, what my higher self and my guides were telling me is the truth about 
being powerful and strong in that softness of that divine feminine within me and being okay with that because such a lot and I'm not talking about sex I'm talking about the receptivity of the feminine the divine feminine and I'm talking about the active projective force of the masculine I'm not talking about sex or gender I'm talking about the receptive flowing energy of that divine feminine essence within all of us and within myself that is really beautiful and juicy and just allowing myself to exist and to be and then the projective forceful active aspect of the masculine not sex again not gender it's just a way to express it but of everyone that everyone has I live so much in my masculine I mean I really feel that I'm right there right now because I am like I said a child of Mars I am projective I am forceful I'm creative I'm just always go 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 but I'm also I have this incredibly like soft emotional sensitive layer I mean being a Scorpio that does make you sensitive I know people think it's like fierce but it makes you very sensitive being a Leo very very you know vulnerable to attack and having people judge you like the cowardly lion like if, if you're not in your highest kind of aspect if you're in shadow a little bit you might be a bit meek and a little bit like scared to be yourself as a cancer moon you know i can be moody as f but i'm also like this soft shell crab sometimes and i just disintegrate and so there was this like dance and this dichotomy between this hard kind of exterior and this projective forceful active essence and then the soft divinity of that power coming from within but what I realize is I really need to appreciate and enjoy the beauty and power in that softness and allowing myself to be soft to be present to be myself and just love myself through that and to just be empowered in that because it is beautiful to be yourself and just to be like well it doesn't matter I am who I am if you don't like me you don't like me that's your problem move along then and so it was very very profound to have these mirrors held up for me and I think my best friend felt the same obviously I'm not going to talk about any of her experiences but she also had some profound experiences through the weekend and we found that some of our experiences reflected one another and as we were both children together grew up together it really was very supportive to have each other there because we just held each other's hands through it and helped each other assimilate and kind of understand everything we were moving through and all the energy that we were moving through us so walking around the town as well was fantastic and then on the final day we went around to the chalice well we had some beautiful time meditating in the garden and we met some fantastic beautiful souls in the garden and spent some time hugging and just being with these beautiful souls that we found and we also took a walk to the white spring and we were able to get into the water it was beautiful it was a little bit too cold to take everything off I didn't feel comfortable on that one occasion either there were a lot of people there but I would not be opposed to it I would do that but we did get in the water it was so beautiful and cool and there was just such a lot of healing happening that day and then my best friend and I we were exhausted and we decided it was time to go home and she had a long journey I had a drive so we just decided that we would say goodbye then and we had a big hug and then we allowed ourselves just some time once we were home and then we sort of checked in on each other every day and had a little phone call and just seeing how we were assimilating and lots of stuff was coming up from us through the week I know I had several dreams that were extremely profound and powerful and helped me to process more of what had happened and now it's been about just over a week, literally got home a week ago. So it was incredibly fruitful and beautiful. So yeah, I'm gonna leave some links below. I'm really glad to have shared this. It was really obviously very personal for me. Yeah, I'm gonna share with you now what I picked up from Glastonbury. So I really hope you enjoy. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you the bits that I picked up now from Glastonbury during my trip. First of all, I will share a couple of bits that I picked up from Starchild before this trip. So this is a trip that I went to Glastonbury earlier this summer and I met up with a Bronia from Bronia K Spiritual and I picked up these candles from Starchild. I still haven't used them yet, however, there is some important work I've got to do with Saturn, so I picked up the Saturn candle and I also picked up the Scorpio candle and my plan is to burn it during Scorpio season because I am a Scorpio ascendant. So that is the plan for this. I just thought I'd share those because I didn't mention those before. It was so amazing to meet Bronia as well, like we have so much in common and it was just like you know we'd known each other in past lives it was kind of weird and yeah just lovely lovely to meet her finally and talk and get to know each other more it was just beautiful so yeah that was a lovely lovely trip and these were just some bits I picked up from Starchild during that trip so back to the retreat trip there were a number of days as you can imagine so the first day let's start with the first day First thing in the Tantra shop, I picked up some beautiful candles which are wrapped up. They're handmade beeswax 
candles from a Ukrainian company and these were, as I said, in the Tantra shop. So you can pick them up there, but they were just different colors. And I do work with these slim beeswax candles quite frequently. So I decided just to get one in the red, the green and the black because I use red quite frequently, I use black quite frequently and green I'm going to be using more of as we move forward. So these felt relevant for me and they were just a few pounds each. So also in the Tantra shop I picked up these. These are P-U-S-S-Y in case, well it's right there in case YouTube doesn't want me to say it. Pesser is internal wellness for a happy JJ. 50 milligram CBD. So I work with CBD quite a lot in my practice and apparently these smell amazing and I went back and forth on this oil. I really love the smell of this particular oil but it didn't have CBD in it and I wanted the CBD. Actually it was like a balm and it was for like wellness and health and then there was this CBD oil that was apparently amazing for pleasure and I ended up purchasing this but my friend picked these up. Then I saw that she got these and I was kind of jealous so I went back and actually swap them and then pay the extra to get these because apparently these smell amazing as well and that's kind of what I wanted. I want the amazing scent and I wanted the CBD factor. So these are for wellness but you can also use them during that so there's a pleasure involved as well so it's kind of for both. So it says place in two as high up as possible before reclining, relaxing, keeping overnight or as desired, lubrication, tissue repair, TMS, ease, postpartum nurture, relaxation, nourishment, hormone balancing, moon time, menopause and beyond. Now I did speak to a gynecological nurse who was like absolutely no no on the retreat. She was like there's no way I'd ever put that near my foof but I've used yoni eggs and such in the past, rose quartz yoni eggs and I've never had any bad experiences. You know I think you just need to use your common sense with it to be honest with you but they do melt so you know you're not gonna have a horror story I don't believe but again you know each of their own this is something I chose you know obviously they're not like medically suitable whatever it's Artemis Rose is the company and they had some other options that were just beautiful like oils and as I said balms that were just beautiful so you don't have to go this way but I did and I'm quite excited to have a go with these in fact tonight might be the night that's TMI and a book I picked up at the Tantra shop is the Book of Lilith, which of course was on my reading list anyway. Barbara Black Kultov, PhD, and I heard some people say that they didn't like this book so much, but you know, for me, it's just important reading. I did start this um, during the retreat, but I found it quite hard to concentrate because there was so much processing happening. I was making some notes at the start, but this is by my bedside now that I'm home because I will be carrying this on and I'm just finishing off a few of the books that I've been working on in the last few weeks. So this is kind of next up. And yeah, this always happens, like new books come in and then they sort of skip to the front of the queue. It's kind of cheeky of them. Ooh. Uh, it's essential reading for the work I'm doing with Lilith anyway and it works for the Tantra shop as well so I picked it up there rather than getting it anywhere else you know just to support the shop. Sons of Asgard I picked up some. This smell amazing this is the Morrigan's Cool blended herbal tea. I'd never bought a herbal tea from Sons of Asgard before. I bought some teas from Starchild before but this is my first time buying a tea from Sons of Asgard and apparently they will refill for you. I really love it there they have so many innovative amazing ideas and I literally wish you had smelly vision because this smells, this has got chocolate in it. Oh my gosh, and I had a chocolate tea once from France, from Paris that I picked up, which didn't taste that great, it smelled amazing, but this, this has got dried strawberry, dried papaya, dried apple, hibiscus flowers, rosehip shells, cacao pieces and cornflower petals, and it just smells absolutely incredible. So I think I'd like a nice cup of this tonight, that is my plan, and make a little cup for the Morrigan as well, because whilst I'm working really closely with Lilith and so much work is happening with Lilith, I'm still in that space when the Morrigan is there, and she keeps coming up and she's like, I'm still here, you know, I'm still here I can still hear you and it's like I think she's almost appreciating that I'm like not doing my own thing but I'm like I'm working so closely with Lilith I think she actually respects it very much so I'm spending some time honoring the Morrigan of late like it's just a kind of reverence thing and just giving her so much gratitude for the support that she has given me over the last five six years so supportive but as I have said in other videos the Morrigan just sort of disappears for a while sometimes just leaves you to it and you're like not even sure what the assignment was it's like uh I think I'm gonna need some more support here <laughs> and she's like no you figure it out I'll come back when you're done and then she comes back and I'm like yes still not done it and she's like mm, okay <laughs> so no, she's not abandoned me, They're definitely not. Things just become clearer slowly, or have become clearer slowly with the Morrigan, whereas with Illith it's like, 
bam, 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 it just doesn't stop. And I think that maybe it's just that maturing aspect with the Morrigan, but she's very much still there. So this was a really nice thing to pick up, I think, in her honor. And also it smells just incredible. So Sons of Asgard. Also, there's apple in the tea, so I know I could use these for the Morrigan, but I have used these apple incense sticks for Lilith as well, because obviously the apple has symbolic relevance in Lilith's story, so I do see it as a herbal ally, a plant spirit to connect to for that. And also, as you can see, beauty, self-worth, acceptance, and these tie in very closely to the work, the shadow work and the inner work that I'm doing with Lilith. So that just made sense to me. So a few times I've purchased these apple incense sticks and I just wanted to stock up on more. So I picked those up from Sons of Asgard as well. And then as well, I picked up some apple blossom because I have made some incense, but I wanted to make a different incense for another aspect of Lilith. Diving a little bit more into some of her aspects now, reading the work of Mark Williams and some of the other aspects that have been shown through some of the lore and how we can see different ways in which Lilith has been portrayed or how the story has been told etc so I wanted to create a few more different types of incense and apple blossom was something I wanted to pick up from Sons of Asgard for that reason and obviously tie in with the incense I'm using. Next up I went to I can't remember what the shop is called but it's down the little alleyway next to Sons of Asgard and there's a little tarot shop and they also sell these seven day candle things that you can't get in the UK very easily I think they actually do sell one or two of these in the wonky broomstick at the top of the high street but I have struggled to find these anywhere really other than this shop so I bought the Leo candle to work in conjunction with this deliverance candle now this is Archangel Michael Michael I really get put off by the new age stuff but this is essentially for a cord cutting work again i don't go in for cord cutting it just does not make any sense because the cords just grow back so for me you have to pull them out of the root but here you have the prayer that you need and i was getting some advice from the conjurer who works in the shop and it was really really great advice to be honest with you and he talked about some psalms that i can use for the working as well and really advised that you know i want to be able to strengthen my own energy and as a leo son it really it is vital for me to be doing that work so that's what these two are here for this working is something that i'm gonna plan in in the next few months it's kind of important but something may have come in the way a little bit so i might just need to clear some roads first there's a lot that goes into it all but you just sort of have to judge i guess when the right time to do some of these things are but there's that. So this is working I have planned and that's why I picked these two up and there were different prices. I think one of them was 15, the other one was 20, I think. So they weren't cheap and this one's got the little lid because it's already dressed. I think it comes dressed. I'm sure they're paraffin or whatever, but I usually like soy or beeswax for my candles because of, you know, what you're breathing in, etc. But for these kind of candles, I would make an exception. And of course I plan to reuse the jars as well, cleanse them out and reuse them. I have quite a lot of soy wax to create my own candles. So I think I might create my own candles with these as well. I think there are some online shops as well that do sell these. So I will endeavor to link them below, but otherwise you can't really find these. So, but I did want to share. On the second day, I went also to Coven of Sisters and I picked up some CBD chocolate that unfortunately I've already eaten. So I can't show that to you, but I've eaten the whole while. It was amazing. CBD chocolate would highly, highly recommend and I will try and link some below for you as well. And in Coven of Sisters, I also picked up these art pieces. So this one, first of all, is Howl. And this is by princebythebay.com, nicoleprincebythebay at gmail.com, insta princebythebay. This was 22. I picked this up because my wolf showed up for me quite a lot in some of the meditations and journeys and rituals that we were working on within the retreat. And I wanted to find some art piece to represent the wolf for me. So I thought this was beautiful and I thought that maybe this could represent me and this could represent my wolf and just the different phases that we're going through and yeah. I just loved it. I thought it was really, really sweet. And then this one, oh my goodness. Like I was struggling to choose between this one and a Witch's Devil one. But this one I just, yeah, the mycelium and this is called As Above So Below, which of course I'm gonna love. So I really wanna get some frames for these. So I'm not sure where I'm gonna put them. But this is Black and Bone. The paper is exclusively made from recycled cotton fiber in Karnataka, in India. So it's beautiful paper. This was 15 pounds, blackandbone.co.uk, blackandbone on Instagram. This was like my favorite 
art from the shop I mean I think I could have picked up like three or four pieces by this creator but yeah I had to have this so I might pick up the witch's devil at some point as well when I go back but these two pieces I had to have from Coven of Sisters and of course the CBD chocolate which I've already eaten which I don't know if I've still got the packet for <laughs> if I still have the packet I'll take a photo and I'll insert it but otherwise Coven of Sisters or is it just called the Coven I think it's just called the Coven go to the Coven it is so beautiful so many lotions and potions and gorgeous things I had like 10 things in my arms and I knew my husband wouldn't let me buy them all so I just picked up what I knew I needed to have right then and there but oh my gosh Coven is beautiful so definitely go if you haven't been so I went to Fairyland Aromatics for the first time and was blown away by the smells in there and I had to pick up some of this Cacao Absolute. I just got the two grams because it was quite expensive but this, oh I can't even get in, it smells incredible. So this is 100% pure essential oil of Cacao Absolute and it smells, I wish, I really wish I had smell vision Oh! It smells like a hot chocolate. So Fairyland Aromatics is the beautiful shop that's a beautiful minty green colour with the lilac. And every time I try and go in there, they're either on lunch or it's already shut because it's further up the road and I kind of typically work my way up the road. So I made it my mission to go there this weekend. So I got this essential oil. I also picked up the ginger essential oil because I want to make some yummy sawin incense and oils and such and just some like wintry oils as well is sort of my plan and then I also got the sweet orange they also had a bitter orange as well uh, I just picked up the, the sweet orange and this is the organic version it was like an extra pound just oh my gosh that smells like you'd literally mix that and you'd have like I mean don't actually do it and eat it but mix those and you've got the scent of Terry's chocolate orange and what is more Christmas than Terry's chocolate orange I mean I mean, if you're a British kid, that is. So these were incredible, and also they have the most beautiful diffusers that look like a distillery. They're about 25 pounds, they were these beautiful glass, and they were just burners, they were just typical kind of burners, but I have that one of those on my list, so you'll probably be seeing one of those at some point in the near future from Fairyland Aromatics, but beautiful, beautiful shop. I'm so glad I made it this time. On the second day was also the time for Star Child, so I picked up a few bits. So I got the Scorpio Natural Incense. Of course, I'm doing my Scorpio working in Scorpio season, which to be fair, when this goes live, we may be there. So this is, again, a beautiful incense. They don't tell you what's in each incense, but you can see what's in them online. I have so many of these. They are just so good, so, so good. And yeah, this will just go perfectly with the candle. It smells very woodsy, very spicy, you know, very, as you'd imagine it would for Scorpio, really. I also bought some Opoponex. I have to grind this quite a lot. So this is a resin that is used a lot in exorcisms. And during our retreat, our facilitator used the Opoponex quite a bit because we did have some spirits in the room. So this was really, really useful for clearing the space for us. And I thought this was a good, good thing to have on hand. I also think it might work quite well for some of the things I'm working with with Lilith as well. So I do need to do a bit of research though because I've never worked with this resin before. So this is a new one for me, but it was highly effective during our workings during the retreat. So I picked some up. Then I also picked up the Space Aroma for Scorpio. Space Aromas are already blended, so they're not like the essential oils. I think I have the Flying Space Aroma for like Spirit Flight, which is really lovely. So this again smells like, I don't know why I'm taking this off, like you can smell it. It smells like the incense. It smells actually sort of more perfumey and more kind of woodsy and sexy than the incense does, but it's really, really nice. So again, I'm gonna be using this through Scorpio season and for my workings, being a Scorpio rising, very powerful. And then I also picked up some myrrh. I think I might already have myrrh, but I know I need to use the myrrh for something I've got coming up and I did not want to not have it just in case. So I picked some up while I was there. So it's got information about myrrh there. So that's that. And then books. So I picked this actually up in Star Child as well. This is Between the Gates by Mark Savish. Now I have listened to Mark Savish speak and I have also got one of his books that I have not read yet. I knew that he wrote about astral projection. I just, you know, I didn't have this in my head. I, I probably 
have already saved it into my wish list on Amazon because I do that with most books, but it wasn't in my mind at the time. So when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, oh yeah. I, I respect Mark Savish and so I thought this would be a great book for me because obviously it's work that I do, lucid dreaming and astral projection and working on strengthening that body of light is so important to me. That's what this is. Between the Gates, Lucid Dreaming, Astral Projection and the Body of Light in Western Esotericism, founder of the Institute of Hermetic Studies, book Mark Stavish, introduction by John Michael Greer, author of Learning Ritual Magic, which is a book that I actually looked for in Courtyard Books, but they didn't have a copy. This is something I'm so excited to get into. As you know, books, they are rapidly coming into my life and I cannot read them fast enough. And the priority just changes. I do really, really, really wanna read this, but Lilith is like pushing me to read her books quite quickly first and then other things come in. And so, you know, I wanna say I want to get to this in the next year because it is so, so important for me and I'm really excited to have this. So that's the plan. So I couldn't not go to Courtyard Books. I didn't make it to the other two bookshops, sadly, but I did manage to go to Courtyard Books. In Courtyard Books, I have wanted to pick up this classic for a while, and obviously being a new edition from Wiser, it has the forward by Mary Kay Greer. I've got PDFs of this, and I've dipped in and out, but it's just not easy to read. So this is just something that is very important reading, I think. Obviously, it's a contentious character, you know, and I'm gonna try and separate the reading <laughs> from who this person was or who I understand this person was, but it's essential reading I feel for me and my practice and if you don't wanna read it, that's fine, but I still read problematic books, to be honest with you, because I want to be able to get, come to my own conclusions about the work. I do think this is an important book to read. I am intrigued and excited. I just feel it's very important for me, so you may not agree, but I wanted to read it. And then there were these two astrological tomes that were five pounds each and they're both essential reading for me that I have on my to be read list. So Stephen Forrest, The Inner Sky, written so many astrology texts that are considered classics and this is one that I just wanted to get into. It's groundbreaking exploration into astrology based on freedom and choice rather than deadening predictions. Still one of the best and most frequently recommended astrology primers for beginners. In a Sky guides the reader into a profoundly rich and empowering evolutionary cosmology that frames life within the context of possibility, hope and wonder very excited to get into this. I just love reading about astrology. It's like such a love for me. And then Astrology for the Soul. Again, there's like a new edition of this and that's why this is obviously secondhand. But I just love having secondhand books. So for the first time ever, a professional astrologer reveals the secret of her astoundingly accurate and spiritually valuable astrological readings. Jan Spillow is a brilliant, accurate, remarkable astrologer. This is a must reading for anyone on the spiritual path to fulfilling their soul's destiny. So this goes into a, a great deal. And again, again, it's one of those bestsellers it's one of those ones that's kind of known for being a great, great thing to read if this is what you're getting into. So I'm really glad I picked these up five pounds each. It's a great bargain, I think. That's everything I picked up. While we're here, I'll just share with you as well my beautiful spirit board just there, as you can see. So that is from Pandora's Witch Box in Ukraine. And here is the glass that goes with. It is so beautifully crafted. I absolutely love it. Just quickly, it's completely unrelated, of course, but I wanted to share it because it's only just arrived and I did have a problem with the delivery of it because Hustle Force did not tell me it had been delivered. It was delivered to our next door neighbors and they did not bring it over to us. So it had been three weeks and I hadn't heard anything. I got in touch with the shop and they were so nice and they sent me the link that Parcel Force sent them and there was a picture of someone accepting my parcel and I was like, what? And I had no idea and Parcel Force didn't get in touch with me. I sent them an email, they didn't get back in touch. So then I was just wandering my neighborhood, like trying to find out where it was. And I, I could see like the porch, so I knew what it looked like. And when I was walking, after I'd wandered my neighborhood for like 20 minutes, trying to figure out, because there are other names, other street names that sound similar. So I was kind of looking for the same number of our house on these other streets, but they didn't look right. And then walking back, I saw that our next door neighbors actually had a porch like what was on the picture of the proof. So I just knocked on the door like thinking, well, maybe they know. And they handed it to me straight away basically. And I kind of, I didn't understand really why, but he explained it was down to ADHD. So that makes a little bit more sense. I completely understand why that would cause them to be unable to bring me the parcel, but it'd been three weeks anyway and they'd had it in their house. So he just handed it to me and I said, thank you and everything. But it's Parcel Force's fault because they should have told me that it had been delivered to the next door neighbor, but they didn't even tell me it had been delivered. So I'd been waiting and waiting and waiting and thinking this is just too long. And it's only after contacting the seller and they were able to pass me 
me the image that Parcel Force had sent them that I was like, okay, well, that's not my house. And so obviously I made that contact with Parcel Force to ask them where it was and they just didn't get back to me. And there was no way, because it's just automated phone calls, there was no way to like speak to an actual human being. So irritating. So eventually they did get back to me just the other day and they just say, oh yes, it was delivered to this number at this address. And I'm like, okay, that's not good enough. So I'm going to get back to them and complain a bit more because I think that this could have easily gotten lost in it's the biggest version of this particular moth head spirit board and I haven't utilized it yet. I literally only got it the other day. I mean, it's been next door for about four weeks nearly but yeah I've only just got my hands on it so my plan is to get to know it a little bit to get it out it's up here so that my dog doesn't come in and chew it otherwise it would be on a tarot mat on the floor so I could like get down on my knees and work with it but what I'll do is probably like put it down on this table here and work with it here for a bit but I want to get to know it first and welcome it into the space but I could not be more thrilled with the support I got from Pandora's witch shop and they were so nice and friendly so helpful and so I will obviously link the store below yeah highly recommend i know a number of other people from the community also have boards different style spirit boards and such from them so i'm so excited to use it i cannot wait probably gonna try and do some work with my ancestral spirits connecting to them for some guidance and wisdom this season so i really cannot wait to use it thought i'd share that and just talk about pandora's witch shop because it is beautiful there's so many beautiful things on their website and highly recommend and they were so helpful and yeah really supportive and so i could not recommend them enough but parcel force <laughs> I will be complaining more because I'm not happy. So yeah, now you've seen that. So I really, really hope that you enjoyed that. So here are just a few clips that I took of our time in Glastonbury, and particularly on the third day when we went around to the Chalice Well. And we spent some time in meditation and journey work within the gardens, and it was just beautiful. Um, so I had some time connecting to the trees and it was absolutely glorious. There was a sense at one point after I really truly felt connected in after I'd done my grounding process and I felt truly centered and connected to the trees and there was a moment where I really felt that listening was happening and that I could hear the trees whispering to me and I could feel that they were responding and then the winds kicked up so much as I was you know talking to the trees and listening to them and it was just really really powerful because I felt like they were taking on the prayers that I had you know worked on during the weekend and they were really helping to shift and heal and transmute some of the energies and just helped to manifest more of what we wanted to cultivate oh what I wanted to cultivate anyway and I really felt it was so powerful at that point so I really felt that the trees the land the earth the spirits were listening and communing and it was just beautiful just to spend time in that space After the meditation I took a little ramble around and found one of the trees which had been sort of propped up on a bench and there were some little recesses and I really felt that I could see a little sprite, a little woodland sprite or a tree spirit within. As it was the autumn equinox, of course, during the weekend, the well itself was dressed up so beautifully. It was such a beautiful sight to behold and just spent some time meditating beside. So then I took a wander around and had a little look at the gardens and this beautiful butterfly was just enchanting and sat there for a really, really long time and allowed us to film and it was just glorious to witness such natural beauty.
The Chalice Well also has this incredible botanical garden aspect to it, so there are lots of witching herbs within the garden and it's just really nice to walk around and spend time with them and to smell them and it's just absolutely stunning. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous place to just while away the hours. I love it. So after we'd finished at the Chalice Well Gardens, we gathered together to have a nice photograph and then we went our way to the White Spring. So I stumbled upon this glorious group of wonderful folks singing uh, in one of the courtyards so I filmed it and shared it on Instagram and I thought I'd like to share it as well here. So thank you so much for joining me, I hope that you've enjoyed watching the video, I know it's been quite long, if you did enjoy it give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe if you haven't already and click the notification bell. I have Instagram. And I have Patreon if you'd like to support me there. I create new and full moon forecasts along with a custom tarot spread, lots of shadow work prompts, planetary magic, practices and rituals, crystals and herbs to work with. And that's for the new and full moon. And then lots on Instagram and there's other ways to support me below. So thank you so much for joining me. Take care and many blessings. Bye.